finally one day the light bulb went off in my head i'm like i could be selling these people this stuff because i was like going to the shows i was making youtube videos and uh and then it grew into all other social media outlets instagram facebook snapchat like everything so i was putting all these videos out there so people started following me and um anyway the shortest form of the story that's how the idea started and i just leveraged my social media following into sales basically so and i've done that ever since that day and the more that my uh, following grows the more that my revenue grows. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. It is yet another week that has gone by, and that means that it is time for another episode of Leaders Talk. I am, as usual, Andrew Dupe, the Chief Relationship Officer here at Leaders Press. And today, my guest is Jonathan Price. So let me tell you about Jonathan. Jonathan is the founder of DownForSoundShop.com. Um, in the span of just five years, he went from working out of his parents' attic to a $20 million in sales annually. And that's all in the car audio industry. Um, this is a milestone that's unheard of in that sector. And now Jonathan has a thriving YouTube community and fellow base heads with 500,000 subscribers and coaches others on creating their passion business. So Jonathan, welcome. Uh, well, we've created our passion business here at Well Leaders Press and did it in a very similar trajectory. But tell us a little bit about you and how you got where you are. Oh, that could be a long story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, first of we, all, we only have we only have about a half hour, so <laughs> the yeah. truncated version. <laughs> Got you. Well, I appreciate you having me on. First and foremost, it's a pleasure oh, yeah. of mine. Um, but yeah, I come from. I know you said you're from Montgomery, Alabama. I come from Greenville, Mississippi, a very small country town in uh, Mississippi, about fifteen twenty thousand people at the time. So nothing major. Um, but I just saw a demand that was coming from me going to car audio shows with mm -hmm. um, a vehicle that I had that had a pretty big sound system in there. And the more that I would go to these shows, the more people would ask me where I was getting my equipment from. And when I was, I had little sponsorships from a couple of companies. So the right thing to do is to point the people back to those companies since they took a chance on sponsoring me. So I would yeah. just say, go to this company and get your products. And anyway, after about, five or six times that being said to me, that same thing, every time somebody would listen to my vehicle, where do you get your equipment from? Finally, one day the light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, I could be selling these people this stuff because I was like going to the shows. I was making YouTube videos and, uh, and then it grew into all other social media outlets, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, like everything. So I was putting all these videos out there. So people started following me. And um, anyway, the shortest form of the story, that's how the idea started. And I just leveraged my social media following into sales, basically. So and I've done that ever since that day. And the more that my uh, following grows, the more that my revenue grows in, in uh, correlation yeah. with that. So that's kind of how it works. Yeah, I want to I want to touch on that a little bit about you know how how we can leverage social media to build because we did the same thing, um, but I, I want to back up just a little bit to that whole thing of you recognizing a demand in the space. So I, a little bit about Leaders Press. I know that a lot of uh, our audience knows about us, but we did the same thing. We entered publishing space, a very crowded space. We found something that wasn't quite being done. Others were, and we we got into it. So how did you find that? How did you get? How did you be able to recognize? that opportunity in a space that had to be crowded. Oh yeah, it's definitely crowded. And I've, um, I, I don't want to say made a lot of enemies, but some people <laughs> will find like what I've done inspirational. And then you have people that have been in the space for 10, 20, 30 years, like that I've kind of blown their doors off in mm -hmm. terms of revenue and growth and everything like that. So some of them get very salty about it because they're like, <laughs> who does this guy think he is like how he's how is he doing this or whatever like they're not excited about it but the majority of people are so just seeing the demand there like i said was me going to these shows and and it didn't happen immediately it didn't right, the light yeah, bulb yeah. the light bulb didn't go off in my head immediately <laughs> like it kept have, having to be the um, opportunity had to keep um, presenting itself to me over and over until the light bulb finally went off. And I'm like, Oh, well, these people are clearly asking, where do you get your stuff from? Like whatever it might be. 
so that's when the light bulb went off in my head i'm like man i could be i could fight but at that point i didn't know anything about business um, i didn't know how to run a business i didn't like i was working <laughs> at an airport pumping gas into airplanes um i was doing all kinds of odds and ends jobs or whatever but that was my full-time job so i'd never ran an official business or anything so when the when the idea popped up i was like oh well how do you even start a business officially like is it hard to get a business license and so that's mm -hmm. when all the other questions came but Anyway, I didn't know anything about business and when that popped up and but you can always figure it out. So that's what I ended <laughs> well, up doing. That's a good that's a good question though. And that's actually something I think a lot of our audience is interested in because either they're in positions where our audience members are starting a business or they're establishing a business and want to teach someone, how do you how do you be able to find that out? I mean, if you're a new you're a new entrepreneur, you you come across that that golden nugget, that lightning in a bottle kind of idea, man, it is intimidating, isn't it? To start out something oh, with that. Oh, definitely. And that's why like the, right after the light bulb went off, like I could be selling these people that stuff. I was like, I don't know how to sell anything. I don't know how to become a dealer for products. <laughs> like, how do you even go about doing that? So um, there's, there was a, I guess all the typical questions that people have when, whenever they have this idea that I want to be in business for myself that stem from that. Um, so I had all those typical questions. So I did find a mentor that helped me get started. And I think that's a very important thing for people. If you can find a mentor that has been there and done that, and it doesn't have to be the exact same space, but just if they've started a business and ran it and like they have a, own like for me if they already had like an online source for it i'm like okay well they have to know way more than i do because they already have a fully functioning store so um i be, um, established a relationship with the, uh, this guy that I, I still have a relationship with his name's scotty johnson he owns a company called excess power batteries and that was one of the products that i sold first because everybody in car audio needs to have high performance batteries to be able to deal with these big uh, car audio systems that they're putting in, in there so that was probably the one of the biggest things for me to figure out stuff way faster than if I'm not saying people couldn't do it on their own yeah. because plenty of people do, but I think it's definitely like a, a slingshot for a person to be shot forward a lot faster than if you didn't know any of this stuff and you were having to read all the books uh, on entrepreneurship, there's a thousand different ones. So which one is going to resonate with <laughs> you the best? So um, anyway, I think that's a very important thing is to have a mentor that can help like with all these questions that are popping up, they almost immediately have all the answers for you right there. And you don't, right. of course you can go watch YouTube videos, like how to start a business or like go on Google or whatever, but it's, there's so many different people saying different things that can be confusing. Sometimes you're like, Oh, is this person right? Or is that person right? Like, and so anyway, that's what helped me a lot was uh, having a mentor. And that's kind of what's inspiring me to help others with me doing the same thing, kind of giving back. Yeah, that, that's just it. I mean, when you think about the idea of bringing in help, some people hesitate to do it. Some people are like, I don't really necessarily you know how much am I going to want to spend on bringing in help? Or, you know, do I want to hire a consultant? Do I want to hire a coach? But when you're thinking in that position, it's about risk mitigation, isn't it? It's about making sure that when you're going to take your shot, <laughs> you're going to have the absolute best chance possible to succeed with it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, if I have to, if I had to go back and do it all over again, um, I would have. And another thing that I see people doing is they now, well, one more thing I see people wanting to get a mentor or wanting to get advice, but the problem is so many people are asking for that and they end up wasting the owners of these companies times. Like I've had it happen to me people will reach out like, Hey, I'm like, I want to start a business. Can you help me out? I'm like, yeah, I'll, like I'll help you out. And then you spend so much time going back and forth with them. And I don't know, six months goes by and you're like, Oh, how's, how's your business going? Like, oh, I decided I wasn't going to do it. I just, and you're like, what? <laughs> I just spent like all this time, like trying to help you and you just, and people just throw it away. And I think the reason why is because it doesn't cost them anything. So I think also this is why a lot of mentors that are doing it on a bigger scale, they charge for their mentorship yeah. because it makes people 
have something invested into it. So they're like, okay, I need to take this serious. I'm not going to pay. I mean, I know people that charge a hundred thousand dollars to do mentorship. So obviously if a person is paying somebody a hundred thousand dollars, they're taking it serious because somebody isn't just going to throw away a hundred thousand dollars. They, it takes a lot of time and effort to uh, come with that type of money. So anyway, it, makes them have skin in the game and they have to more yeah. than likely they're going to take it seriously. And even if they don't, you've been somewhat compensated for your time. So I understand that now. Um, but anyway, mentor uh, is very important in helping slingshot you forward in entrepreneurship or business starting. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just it. When we're going into business for ourselves, we're becoming our own bosses or we're becoming partners with someone else or, or we're starting a business early enough that, you know, we, we become executive staff and, and we don't think about the, the difficulties right. <laughs> that, that we have. So it really is about the accountability. You have to think about uh, having some kind of an accountability partner, especially when you don't have anybody else that's actually that you're reporting to. Definitely. And I think that's also a big misconception of people they're like, oh, I'm going to be my own boss. Like, I won't have to listen to anybody. There's two things to that. It's even harder because you don't have somebody forcing you to, like, I have a whole morning routine I do. I wake up every morning at 345 and start my morning routine and, like, I start my day. That's, do you think I want to do that every single day? Absolutely <laughs> not. Like, and most people wouldn't, they're like, oh, I'm on my boss. I'm going to sleep until I'm not going to set an alarm. I'll <laughs> sleep until whenever. Uh, so they, they have this false reality set where they think they'll just be able to, I don't know. I've heard people say that, oh, I only work five hours a week. And I'm like, I'm on boss. I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I, I don't, I don't know anybody that's actually doing that. That's like a maybe, thing maybe you for your Etsy shop. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it still takes more time than that uh, to, because you got to fulfill orders and everything like that. But Yes, you can be your own boss, but it also takes a lot of, if you want to be super successful, you have to be really structured and really diligent about what you're doing. Because if you get complacent and you're like, oh, I'll just sleep until lunch every day and just do whatever I want to, <laughs> you're you're not going to be killing it because you're wasting, like, I think you're wasting your time. Uh, and then you have, you don't have a boss, so to speak, but you have thousands of bosses. Now I have like, I think we're coming up on like a hundred thousand customers. So we have a lot of people we have to report to and listen to yeah. when they have <laughs> issues with their orders or whatever it might be. So they essentially become your boss in a way because they're, if they have an issue, they're going to reach out to you and you have to fix it if you're doing business the right way anyway. And that's the only way that you're going to stay in business for a long period of time is if you're doing business the right way. Because if you aren't, is that word is going to spread fast and your business is going to dwindle for sure. So yeah, that's a couple well, of facades think... I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You also, though, in my the way that I see it, you take on another set of responsibilities when you become a boss and, and when you become your own boss, and that is to brand yourself. Um, because if you're your own boss, you must have some kind of specific branding that connects you. And so, I mean, I see you, you've got 500,000 subscribers. That's even more than us. And we've been very proud of how many we've been able to accomplish in this time. And you've get, even got a name for them. You've got base heads. And that's a, that's a great foundation to build upon. So how do you then begin to take on that concept of now that I'm going to run a business, I've got to be a brand. Right. Uh, and I think so. One of the biggest things was when I initially started all my social media things, I I didn't even have an idea of, like I said, I didn't know anything about business. I just started mm -hmm. these channels because like I wanted people to be able to see my videos or whatever. So they were getting a real personable relationship with me through watching my videos or like whatever content I was posting, if it was Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So I wasn't selling anything. So that made it where I could grow my following a lot faster because when people, anytime you put out there that you're selling something people are like, ah, like get away from me because <laughs> we're being bombarded with ads and stuff all day yeah. long. So um, since I didn't have anything to sell and I wasn't even thinking about becoming a business, I just, I was like, oh, well, I'm just sharing my videos and stuff. And people started following me because they, they liked what I was doing. They thought it was cool, like the reaction videos and stuff. So that was like a, a big shot in the arm for me off the get-go. I didn't even know that I was building 
at that time, I had no <laughs> idea that I was building the foundation for what it is today, but I'm right. glad that I did because it, it gave me this huge, um, supporter base that I can like when I did start a business and I let people know like, Hey, I started this core audio business. If you need anything, like come, come and check me out. And slowly, but surely people started coming and checking me out. And that's kind of how the ball got uh, rolling. Well, see, I think that you were selling yourself. Uh, we're selling something though. I think you were selling yourself and then you were selling rather than a product you're selling the partnership because if you come at it from the direction of I'm going to begin by me connecting to the audience. Uh -huh. And then at that point, I can begin to offer them things that I know that they want. That's a, that's kind of a new way of approaching business, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it is, but I, I just didn't have any idea what I was doing yeah. at that time. I, I, like I said, I'm glad it happened the way that it did that I was able to grow it and then turn it into sales. But I, I know something that people, struggle with is they they start a business and they start a, a facebook page for it and when again when people see like oh it's another business that's trying to sell me product like they like they're not trying to help me with any problems that i'm having really they're just trying to sell me product so it makes people really apprehensive about being a follower of that page so th you'll see a lot of people now are posting viral content that they are seeing shared by other pages mm -hmm. and it may not even have anything to do with like car audio or whatever niche uh, they're in they just uh, share it because it gets people engaged with their page like oh they they see or they uh, share normal funny stuff as well so uh, we'll follow this page and then every now and then you drop like a product review or something in there so they're not so bombarded with with that so when a company is starting out and they don't have a following, it's it's really hard to grow a legitimate following that's, that's actual supporters. I mean, you have so many companies that are buying their followings, and it's so blatantly clear now that like people will have a million followers on Instagram, and they mm -hmm. get like 20 likes. I'm like, <laughs> come on. They, <laughs> you, you, we know well, you bought your following. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, but see that that's that's that actually is interesting because Leaders Press had some of the same early issues in our first days of you know not really knowing where to address things. But that that becomes it. You don't really you have to find the avenue. You have to find the right social media platform. Like for us, we tried Facebook. Yeah, that was not for us. Mm -hmm. When we went to LinkedIn, an entirely different experience, and it, it managed to actually massively bootstrap our business. Awesome. So how do you find the right platform for you? Yeah, I mean, you, you'll want to definitely try them all out since uh, I believe all of them are free. <laughs> it, you, you can't, <laughs> when you're getting for, started. For now, you, I, I know Facebook is instituting a, a paid for content creators, but I mean, I think that's just a bonus really more than anything else. Yeah, and I know, I think I saw where Elon was talking about doing a paid for Twitter thing. I mean, I personally i would be all for it if i didn't have to see a million ads like or whatever <laughs> i'm like sure i'll pay ten dollars a month or 20 whatever i don't know what their idea is but um oh, i forgot where we were going with that oh yeah we were we were talking about like the the social platforms are free so anybody can join them yeah oh yeah which ones uh how do we find out which ones yeah how do you find the ones that write for you uh so like i pretty much started one of everything that i could think of and when and you can so you kind of experiment with them and we still experiment every yeah. day to see which one's getting more engagement, which one, because I can post something, for instance, my personal Facebook page and my, the life of price Instagram page. There are a lot of similarities. I, I share very similar stuff on them. I, I can, like I shared something the other day on my personal page, had hundreds of comments, like a bunch of shares over a thousand likes on my personal Facebook page. I share it. Uh, which has like, I have like 1400 friends or something. There's not a ton <laughs> of people. Um, and then I go on my, uh, the life of price Instagram and post pretty much the same thing. And I get such a little response from it. I'm like, what, what's going on here? Like it's, <laughs> I, it was a great post over here, but over here I tried like something very similar and it didn't get hardly any engagement. So I'm like, well, that tells me that people that are on my personal Facebook page, they, care a lot more about what I have to say in this, like whatever I was posting about that day. So that taught me a lesson. Um, and my worst thing is 
for us is Twitter. Like it doesn't do anything for us. So you said yours was Facebook. It didn't do anything for you really. Yeah, Mine's one. Twitter. Like it, like I can post stuff on there and it's just not for car audio. I don't know anybody in car audio that's killing it on Twitter. So that's just <laughs> not our thing. Our thing, our biggest things that we found is uh, Facebook and Instagram being, uh, and I mean, my Snapchat's decent. Uh, I do it just to have stuff out there, more content. Um, but yeah, our biggest ones are Facebook and Instagram for us, for sure. So do you find that your presence on all these social media platforms, how, how do you leverage those and to be able to take content and bring your audience from those platforms that you don't control? Like you, you don't control Facebook, we don't control LinkedIn, but bringing it in the platforms that you do control, like your website or direct interactions with you. Yeah, I mean that that's a big thing too. Like you want to um it's a it's kind of like I don't I don't know if it's walking on thin ice or whatever, but you're you're trying <laughs> to you don't want to come across so salesy all the time because it's gonna turn people off from you. Like you're right, not gonna yeah. want to they're not gonna wanna um be there all the time because they're like this dude's just trying to sell me stuff 24 7 it's it's <laughs> annoying so you have to kind of walk a fine line of like providing content this like i share a lot of i've been very transparent in my whole journey that of getting started and like so many people have followed me for five ten plus years and they're like man it's cool to see your transformation like how you've grown like i know where you came from i remember when you were just cutting grass or pumping gas and now you're like you're you own this 20 20 million dollar a year company and it's, it's awesome to see the transformation so uh them having that personal relationship uh, or following me all this time has been a great thing and it's definitely been a huge help um, and people enjoy me being transparent because so many companies, I see this hurting people a lot as well in the car audio space. There's a lot of people that put out there or company owners are like, oh yeah, we killed it this year. We like, or like we're shipping out a million orders a day. Like just these constant outlandish claims of things. <laughs> and And you're like, over time i've seen it like at first people were like oh that's really cool a lot of comments a lot of stuff like oh it's a good job and then now hardly any reaction to that people are like something because they don't ever provide any proof like if i say i did 18 million dollars a year or 18 million dollars last year whatever like i post our store the graph like the mm -hmm. i post the data to back it up and people a lot of people are like, why do you show people that? I'm like, I've, I've been transparent about my whole journey. And on my Facebook page, like, I love going back in my memories and seeing when I was just doing, I was super excited to do like $500 in sales in a day. I'm like, man, this is amazing. <laughs> so it's, it's, it reminds me and people, other people have seen that too. And now like we're doing 50, sometimes a quarter million dollars in sales in a day. So to see the contrast and people to be able to follow that, it, it inspires a lot of people. Yeah, of course, it's going to make some people upset or they're like, oh, you're bragging. I'm like, I'm not bragging. I'm just showing people the proof and that you can come from a small town and not have any direction and figure something out to be able to do the same exact thing. I'm nothing special. Uh, like I don't, I know my IQ isn't <laughs> super high. Like I, I got a high school education. I didn't do anything super crazy and I was able to figure this out. So I just share it to let people know that they can too. Well, and, and, that, and that's really important. I mean, I, I keep hearing these in this podcast. We do it. As, I talk to CEOs, entrepreneurs at this point, multiple times a day, we, we publish every week and, I do hear a lot of, you know, you don't really need to have the formal education necessarily to be able to do this. You need to be able to connect with people that you're, that, especially nowadays. I mean, it's now less about, you know, understanding raw numbers and understanding, you know, how to build a funnel. And you know, those are important. But what's really important is actually being able to connect on the ground with your customers in an engaging way. So do you think that that's a result of, how we now do things with social media and is that is that something new um I, I definitely think in person connection like you'll never be able to duplicate that yeah there's there's zoom like we're doing now but yeah. like having this conversation at a, a coffee shop or over dinner or something <laughs> would be you know it would be way better and that's why people have 
private jets. Like they're like, I could, I could zoom a person, but I won't have the same impact on that person. I guarantee if you had like, say a deal is going down, one person said that they would zoom you, give you the same exact offer or a person shows up on their private jet, walks into your business and say, Hey, like, I'd really like to do business with you. Offer you the same exact thing. Who's going to get the business? The person that showed up at your office is going, not, not the person that just called and showed up on a screen, the person that showed up in person and made it where you can have that personal connection, like is, is huge to me. So yes, there's good things uh, about, it's convenient for Zoom and it can get some things done, but I think the major things in life, it like the in-person connection is like, you can't put a price on that like it's definitely going to surpass the other yeah. in all areas in my opinion well that, i mean that, that that just goes down to you know what you said a little bit earlier that it's about building the relationships it's about creating the connection because i mean i can tell you that someone who you know I, it's coming from sales previously before i was doing this in this in the business I can tell you that somebody that just sits there and goes through a generic script and, and runs through and, and talks to you and, and it's, it's very automatic and very salesy is a different experience from someone that begins and gets to know you and that you actually understand that you connect with. I think that's why most of our uh, listeners right now are thinking about writing a book because they want to begin the relationship with as much information as possible. I think transparency has benefited both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I've had so many people like ask me to write a book for so long. A friend of <laughs> mine, I just like met this guy like a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I have his book right here. He, um, he's in credit repair and he's helping tons of people repair their credit. And, uh, he was posting, we have a business chat that we share stuff in and he was sharing every now and then that he's, um, making progress on a book that he was going to write. And I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. And next thing I know, like, he's like, Oh, it's for sale on Amazon. I'm like, I'm buying it. Like, I'm going to support this guy for sure. And anyway, it, uh, it shows up and I'm sitting here looking, I'm like, he did it. Like, why, why haven't I done it? Like, cause I mean, so <laughs> many people are, are asking for me to do this and I, I just keep putting it off and, um, but I see a lot of people say that you need to, everybody needs to write a book and plant a tree, like, cause they will surpass your life. Like they'll be able to, uh, help people even after you're gone. So, um, I thought that was a cool thing. I can't remember. I think it was Patrick, Bat David, a guy that I follow, um, has a big following, super cool dude. But anyway, so yeah, very, well, Hey, when you're ready to write that book, give us a call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, definitely. we definitely can help you pull that off. Um, well, Jonathan, we could talk a lot about this for a long time. And I say that on all these podcasts, but yeah, we can do some deep dives. But I, what I want to do right now is give you an opportunity to talk to our audience. And as someone who has been able to do what some of them right now want to do, I mean, many of them are already there, but some of them are, are starting out and they're where you were five years ago. Uh, lessons learned, golden nuggets for them. What can you tell them that you wish you knew and that they can do right now? Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know it's always it's always the hard one. What I've, what do, what do we wish I knew then? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would really change much. Uh, maybe listened more and took like what and and I'm a a the reason why I know about the mentor thing and how people can maybe take it for granted is because I did it some when I was first getting started. So if you do find a mentor. I mean, I suggest that that's a very big thing that I would suggest for people is to find a mentor if you can. Um, and be, I mean, obviously if it's free, that's great. Uh, but if a person is going to charge for it and you have a connection uh, with them, then like that would be worth your money to do that, but really pay attention to them and, and listen, not just, and you need to absorb it because mm -hmm. so many things go in one ear and out the other, and it's, it's just forgotten about and uh, time is wasted. And to my thing is like, I've had an unwavering work ethic. Like I, and I still, I mean, I come into work at uh, 5 45 in the morning. And I mean, I do all this, these things before work, having a morning routine, very important. Um, I wish I would have, implemented a a morning routine of wake, waking up early and taking care of myself mm. first my health uh because 
it doesn't matter how much money you ever have. If you lose your health, you lose all your wealth, you lose everything. Yeah, so, so, um, I, I think I, I wish, because the more I, I used to work out and be healthy or whatever. And then the more my business grew, the more my health and exercise declined because I'm like, Oh, I don't have time. I'll, I'll get to it tomorrow coming up with all these excuses. And the next thing I know, like I, I'm getting out of breath, walking up a set of stairs, I uh, can't tie <laughs> my shoes. Like all these things are happening. And I'm like, okay, I, I got to start taking care of myself. So that's when I found out I have to take care of myself first in the morning, get that out of the way first. So no excuses come up. So those are a few things that I think are very important. Mentorship, take care of yourself. Don't lose yourself uh, along the way. You can always make more money, but you can't ever make more time. Yeah, that is fantastic advice. Uh, I, I, I resemble your remarks <laughs> on what happens when you just start getting, yeah, the, the time goes away. You're right. And you, yeah. you have to take care of yourself and it can create great problems if you don't. Yes, um, sir. Yep. All right. So how can our audience find more about you? Uh, so my YouTube channel um, is The Life of Price and Facebook page, The Life of Price. Uh, this is going to be my, well, my YouTube is like when I share everything on there, but I also have a down for sound shop, Instagram page and Facebook page. Obviously that's more business related. And I have um, my personal Facebook page is just Jonathan Price. I think now I have over like somewhere around 30,000 people just following my personal page, which I'm like, I'm just this regular guy from Mississippi. What, what, <laughs> what's so uh, I actually asked that on my, my page. I'm like, I mean, y'all can follow a billion other people. Why are you following me? And basically that's what they said that when we've seen your journey, we came across your video or we met you in person at a show. We really liked you. And it's, um, it was good. So, so yeah, that's a few different ways people can get in contact with me. Perfect. And all those links are down below, ladies and gentlemen, uh, check out Jonathan, check out his business. Uh, Jonathan, we really appreciated having you on today. I, I think we have some unique nuggets to hand to our audience from that. And yeah, we uh, absolutely wish you the best with your endeavors in the future. I appreciate you having me on, man. Hope you have a fantastic day as well. Same to you.